God, you got me crammed back here. What's up, freaks? You giggling about it right there, little one? Move, you guys see, you're crushing my toes here. This is Breaking the Cycle, episode number quattro. How do we make it four shows, these two knuckleheads? I don't know. How do we make it four shows? Nah, 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 yeah, good, good one. Yeah. Wake up, snap out of it, slap out of it before I slap you out of it. <laughs> what was that? That's freaking creepy. Well, that fits perfect with the drugs and alcohol theme. Today, we are talking about drugs and alcohol. Yes, we're with the seven-year-old midge, 10-year-old Tyson who needs a freaking haircut. I got cooked up by Barbara. I know Mr. Clean, he could hook you up. And I need the same barber to <laughs> weed whack my face and my back. They could just take their lawnmower from out back and ride, drive it over us and we'll be all good this is episode move up some question squeeze me back here we'll line up with her episode number four this is breaking the cycle this is a live show on how to be a positive male role model and lead your freak family by breaking the cycle and changing the entire trajectory of your family tree so you can become the type of man that one day your son would want to become and the type of man that one day your daughter would want to marry and these are the type of conversations you should be having with your kids so they can learn to think for themselves and, and not afraid to be themselves. That's what it's all about, being their freak little selves, using their freak little minds. Yeah, you, you little freak show, little troublemaker. So, so that when they eventually, and they will be, confronted with, with these situations in life as they get older and even not even too old these days, they're not in shock and they'll have an idea on how to approach it and how to live the freak, no excuses, freak code that we have. On Instagram, you can see up here the board for the freak code. Yesterday, I broke down the freak framework of what it, what it is to be a freak. Um, Steve says episode 104, and here we are, episode 4 of Breaking the Cycle. So today, we're going to talk about drugs and alcohol. You guys excited to talk about drugs and alcohol? Yeah. yeah. Why are you saying no? I mean, you guys not... want to joke? Oh, God. Why? Well, here we go. I was at the bank today, and an old lady and, and an old lady told me to check her balance, so I pushed her over. Yeah, right, for another dunk? Oh, no. Another one. Oh, lucky us. A two-for-one deal here. I'm breaking the cycle. Lucky us. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. There's the freezing. This is horrible. They get worse and worse. They get worse and worse. What do you just do? Look up on the on the internet's lame ass jokes? Did that me look up? No. No. Do you tell these your, do you tell these at school? To your class in school? Um, no. No. You should. You should tell them. So before we get into it, we always like to hear on breaking the cycle, we like to break down the freak code, our freak family values that we have. And we're not going to go through them all, but, and then after each lesson that we're talking about, after each show, I'm going to ask these two, which of these values do they see the lessons from the alcohol and the drugs falling into? So the free code family values, we're not going to read the description of all of them. We did that in episode one. You can go back and check that out. But the first is discipline. It's energy. energy. It's attack. It's, it's mind. It's body. It's listen. Army mission. Sorry. It's Listen. Hello, someone. I mean, it's. Okay. Create, Create win, win, confidence, confidence protect spread. freaks. Since you two are half asleep, snap out of it. Snap out of it. You're going to, this is going to go sideways real fast, you two. This is going to go sideways real fast. We're going to show a, fr a freak show here in a second. What are you doing? You just look at yourself and your faces that you make all the time. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's so creepy. And what's up with this pencil neck? <laughs> God, what is this pencil neck? Pencil neck pee head. So out of those, and I'll just recap them again because it was very choppy and not focused and not disciplined. The, the free code, the key words are discipline, energy, energy. Attack. attack. I'll start that over. Discipline, energy, attack, mind, body, mission, listen, create, win, confidence, protect, and of course, freak. And of course, I am flipping also at the end with a big old no excuses goes on to everything. So as we're talking about alcohol and drugs, we're going to see where do the where does that fit in? Where does what we're talking about fit in to those core values? So first of all, do they talk tell you guys about alcohol and drugs in school at all? No, nothing like that. Just about masks and 
Learn. Yeah. That's the it's same it. thing we said about the creeps. Are you uh, serious? They don't tell you about drugs and cigarettes and alcohol and... Oh, uh, my no. teacher did mention it one time. She said, you're not to bring your parents' gun to school. You're not to bring Nerf guns. You're not to bring alcohol or Water drugs. guns. Not even water guns. All right, but, that's, but they don't tell you, talk to you about it or teach you about it? No. No. No one, you know, they don't have like a... A cop, a police officer come and talk to her, like in school, like an assembly to talk to all the kids in the school about... Police officer did just come, but he just like... Probably to arrest you for something. You probably brought some lethal Nerf gunner with you or something that you you, you modified. Oh, I did. I do have actually a lethal Nerf gun. Not lethal. So, they, you seriously, they don't tell you, they don't like... We used to have assemblies where the police officer, there was like a, a drug officer who would go to the schools and like teach kids about... It was like first grade, second grade, they used to do that. They used to bring really? a big police car, they'd pull it into the gym of the school, and it was like all these drawings on it with like eyes, it was like a person, looked like a face on the police Wait, car. Wait, really? Yeah. What gym of the school? We don't have a gym in Wait, really? In first grade, a yeah. police car? Every grade, they would have a dare. It was called dare in New York, it's what it's called. I can't believe they don't have that here. Holy... I've and they would have, you know, have an assembly? Do you ever have an assembly with whole schools together? Yeah. Yeah. It's well, just about like music. Uh, uh, one time we had a... Uh, an assembly outside, but it was just for Patriots Day for the flag salute. So this is this is exactly why. All right, whether you're homeschooling or not homeschooling, you need to homeschool your kids. Even your kids are going to schools, public schools, private schools. You still need to freaking homeschool your kids. What is that? There is fifth or sixth grade. Dave Ecker. No, but they used to come to. They used to come to our school. We were in second grade. I remember they were coming and, and telling us about say no to drugs. They always would do that. Oh, no, we, we had that say no to drugs, but they didn't talk about it. Yeah, it's called Red Ribbon Week where they just say not to do drugs and that's it. But they do have a magician come there. A magician? He's yeah. probably a crackhead. No, his friend <laughs> Is he was. he high? His friend was. Are they was, all fucked up? Are they all drunk and high? Be, he got some, like, cocaine or something and then he took it and he broke into a house because he thought it was his. And the next week he wasn't there because he was in jail. And it was he was telling you his story, so they did do mm -hmm. something. There's something like this, so they are they are doing some teaching you a little bit at least. But they should be teaching you that shit regularly. But this is exactly why you need to have these conversations with with kids at home, like about different types of drugs. What are drugs? What do they do to you? How do they make you act? How do they make and even alcohol? What is it gonna do to your freaking brain? Like the word cocaine and the word heroin. And crackhead are not like big shocks in this house. We're not afraid to talk about this shit. Right? Have you heard those terms before? Here at least? Always. Not always. Not always. They don't just walk around. Crackhead! Cocaine! We don't just walk around screaming them. We mean always. We mean I by mean, that. Well, like, at least once a day. Because mommy wears those giant glasses and it's like yeah. a honeybee on heroin. <laughs> they yeah. say the big sunglasses looks like a honeybee on heroin. I don't even know what that so means. So I don't know how a honeybee would get on heroin. Where does a honey? Where does a honeybee even find heroin? Who's selling heroin to a honeybee? You know you're a good businessman if you could sell heroin to a honeybee. So the things that she, the things that go over her eyes are like this big and they're squares. It's honeybee like on it's like two manhole covers, like two sewer covers on the face. Like how does even your neck? It's got to build up your neck muscles. That's got to be crazy. But how do you? Too. I don't even know. I don't, I, it, it, you guys want to hear a joke? And you oh, don't even no. see through Another them. joke? We barely even got started. Here we go. We're a third joke. We're lucky us. What do you got? Why couldn't the pony sing, sing a lullaby? Because its voice, I mean, it, it was a little hoarse. Get it? Because, and then. We get it. It's just, a little. it's. It, if you have to explain a joke, it probably means it's bad, but it's so bad you don't even have to explain it. It's just bad. Bad. Oh, my God. That was actually... You got, are you guys ready for another joke? No, we can't. All right, let's spread, uh, spread out the, the... We can't take so much humor at once. Spread out the two jokes as I just spit a hot over there. Would you sit still? You're bouncing and kicking all over the place. Jeez. Talk about a honeybee on heroin. So, have you, have you two ever seen anyone drunk before? Yes. Yes, many times. You've seen like on like on the internet, and we've seen people like a lot of those mm. videos and stuff. First, we'll get to that. <laughs> Have uh, so, what do you see? What do you see when you see? What what do you comes to mind when you see someone drunk? What goes to your head? Like, 
when you see how people are acting or whatever when they're drunk. I feel I truly sorry for them. <laughs> Why? Uh. How do you know they're drunk? You know how we watch like those blooper videos on like YouTube, those like fail videos that you watch once in a while when you earn your stupid time after your workout, after your reading, after you're cleaning the house, after you do all your chores and all your work around the house, when you're allowed to have some stupid time and just do whatever you want and you watch like those stupid fail videos or blooper videos or whatever, how do you know when someone's drunk? Because I mean, right? you say, oh, that person's definitely drunk. What is it? What's like the giveaway? Like, how do you, what do you see? What do you think when you see those? They're just doing crazy things and walking around all wobbly. Their voice is a little weird. And the guy was on a motorcycle one time when he was drunk. Do you know? I don't know the numbers. I bet if we Google it. I bet the people that get in accidents and deaths from like car accidents and drunk driving and alcohol related accidents. Do you know I bet you it's like 10 times or 100 times more per year than any corona do you know what? Guarantee it. If Guarantee somebody, it. I'm, so, I'm still wondering why they didn't ban cars yet. They they told you to close down your businesses and all these things, but they they didn't ban cars. Or even I don't know if they should ban alcohol. There's like a time and a place for alcohol, like when people celebrate if they're doing it responsibly because it's something they want to do to like get together with friends and celebrate and have cheers. I get like there's a, a something to it, but the fact that people, you know, people drink and drive all the time, right? You know, it's a huge thing people do. You know, people drink and drive and kill people. They kill families. They kill kids drinking and driving. And you know what usually what happens when someone gets in a drunk, an accident drunk and driving? Mm -hmm. You know what happens to the person drunk that's driving? They don't. They, what do they you think? go to jail? Well, they could if they get caught. But what do you think in, in general, their health, with their health and like injuries? How do you think they, what do you think happens to them usually? They get cancer. Cancer? No. From drunk driving? They die? Like well, the from... people. Usually, it's crazy. Someone's drunk driving, they'll hit someone, and the people in the car they hit, a family, a mother, a little baby, like kids, will die. But a lot of times, a person that was drunk driving doesn't even die. They'll kill people, and they'll just walk away, sometimes even not even a scratch on them. Sometimes injuries or whatever. But I bet more people in drunk driving accidents die from that get hit by drunk drivers than the actual drunk driver themselves. I don't know that I'm just thinking that, but I hear it, you hear it all the time. And then the person would go to jail for it, and but not even for too long. Imagine if they made drunk driving, I mean, drunk driving is illegal. But imagine that if you went, if you got caught drunk driving one time, you went to jail for life. You think people would drunk drive then? No. I think that should be a Which new is law. why it should that be. That imagine way. that. That 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 would make people not think twice before because all it takes. You know how easy it is to get in a car accident, right? Like one little swerve of someone when they're texting or doing something stupid, they're not paying attention for a second. You could be in an accident and die in a car. Now imagine you're all like the people you're talking about. Where they're, what are you doing? Are you even paying attention to what we're talking about? And also, there you needs, got something better to do? There needs yeah. to be more cops on the road. Like, I see a cop once in a while, but like like when we were in Ohio, like every hundred feet, you'd see a cop car yeah, here. Yeah, someone's out in Ohio. I don't know there. what was going on that highway. That must be like a place where they smuggle drugs or people or something there. Or guns. I don't know what was going on there. There was cops every, every two feet in Ohio. But... What were we talking? What were we saying here about that? Hello, uh, I was asking you something. Oh, the way the people act. Imagine driving with the people that you were talking about, where they're all wobbly, and you said their voice is a little funny, right? You can just hear by the voice. Uh, it's not like a fucking idiot, right? Yeah, they start slurring their words like this, and they start talking like this, and all this other stuff. Imagine driving a car. Are you gonna? Are you gonna sit still? Seriously? Imagine someone driving a car like that. And all the lights and nighttime and flashing and no one went to stop and slam. You know, have sometimes we're driving the highway at the slam of the brakes because someone cuts you off. You know, when you're drunk, your reflexes are going to be delayed. You're not going to be able to die quickly enough in time. You're going to crash into someone. It's so, so easy to get in a car accident already. Now imagine when you're freaking drunk, what could happen in, in a car accident, right? Yeah. Another joke. Okay, I have another Dave joke. Dave Eckert wants another joke. Okay. Why didn't the skeleton go to the dance? Oh, no. Because he had no body to go with. Can you please stop with that freezing? I had a nightmare yesterday. A nightmare That everybody what? was frozen after I said a joke. Because they are. They're frozen in shock at how it's just so funny that they don't even know how to react because it's so hysterical. So freaking funny. 
All right, so we, you've seen people junk. It's obvious when someone's junk. It's obvious in, when someone's even on drugs, it's even like a lot of times the next level, right? They're just completely looped and whacked out of their freaking mind, right? You've seen people like that on the internet and whatever. You know, I've never, I've never done a single drug in my life. I never even smoked weed, not even one time. And I could say smoke weed because you know what smoked weed is. I've never, you know what cocaine is. You know what all, like, we've taught you. You even know sort of what it looks like. I don't even know that much of what a lot of it looks like, except for if we Google shit or whatever. But no, we had the and Ghost home, Recon. And home, in the, some of the games and we play in the movies and stuff. In the movie, Holmes and Watson, they had a little bit of cocaine. Oh, yeah, Holmes yeah. and Watson. That's what he said. Every, everything's nothing, nothing like morning a little... Morning snort of, snort of cocaine. It's like a morning snort of cocaine, of course. So, we don't shield that stuff. We have those conversations. But have you ever seen anyone in person... Let's say really drunk. Hello? Is anyone here? Uh, you. Okay, I'll tell the you, story. You, Never you, mind, you, I'll tell the story. Never no, mind. No, no, you you want to be zombies you, you, and you want to just you, be asleep. You, you, so you. there was we a party. A what? We were having some sort of party. I'm pretty sure it was Halloween or I don't know. And then we were on our way home. It's like 12 o'clock at night. And. We're 100 feet away from the gym. and Meaning going to the gym or going home? Going home. So we just left. Like just pulled yeah. out at the first light. Like 100 uh -huh. feet. And then you you tell Molly to stop. So then she stops. You you get out. And then you say. Well, no. We stopped twice. See? You're, see? You're rushing the story and you're skipping oh. main parts of it. No, we stopped. So we're 100 feet. I say pull over. She pulls over, I jump out, I start yakking up my guts. You feel mess, miss that part. Start puking my guts Wait, out. Really? Yes, about 100 feet into it. Get back, because I get motion sickness. I get car sick, not drunk. And this time I was completely wasted. This is a few years ago now. So I get back in the car after puking. We drive another 100 feet. I open the door while the car is still moving, like I'm ready to jump out because I don't want to puke in the car. I think it was a pretty new car at the time. And I didn't want to puke in the car, so I opened the door while I was driving to puke again, like and jump out of the moving car if I have to. Don't even give a damn. So we pull over again, and I yak up all kinds of green and nasty and puke, and like that's a hell of an ab workout. This one thing about puking gives you a freaking gives you a six pack anyway, and dehydrates the shit out of you. So I'm puking, and I look in the back seat, and these two are still awake because they would come to these parties with us. Yes, like the, the yeah David one time did that on the George Washington Bridge. We were in a New York City party. I was driving back because I didn't drink, and he was hammered. It was like Lisa's birthday party or something in the city. What do you mean by hammered? Hammered, like wasted, like drunk, like polluted, like poisonous. Polluted. Polluted. So we're driving across the George Washington Bridge, which is like a bridge. Like, you're in a lane. There's a wall here, and then the Hudson River is like hundreds of feet down. Like, you're in the ocean, basically, if you crash or jump over that. And you know David's not a tiny little fellow, right? He's like six foot four, like 260 pounds. He doesn't even tell me to stop the car. He doesn't even open the door. He hangs his big freaking, what's that, what's that character's name? Shrek, his big Shrek body out of the window. While we're driving like 50, 60 miles an hour, his whole big body is hanging out to start puking out of the car on the George Washington Bridge. Why'd you a giant? Huh? Why'd you a giant? Giant? That he's a giant, I guess. He's hanging. Six foot four, 260 pounds out of a moving car across the road. That's what happens when you get polluted. <laughs> polluted. Fucking hammered. That's what happens. <laughs> so, all right. So back to the story. Of the, I'm there puking on the side of the road. And I thought it was, I said, give you my gun. But you said, what did I say when I was, I, 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 I couldn't get back in the car. So what did I say? You had the Kabar, I think. The K-Bar, the Marine yeah. Corps knife. Uh-huh. And you said, give me my knife. You're, you're not a, you say you want to tell the story you're not a good no, so I'm puking on the side of the road for the second time and I know if I get back in the car it's going to get worse I'm going to puke this green like stomach bile goops of nastiness and and hockalooey snot stuff all over the car which I don't want to do so I don't want to get back in the car a third time because I know it's not going to end well so I figure I'm just going to walk home so I, I, I look over to the Russian and I, I thought it was I said give me my gun but he said I so I said and I can't barely talk. Like Mid said, you hear them mumbling and stumbling. And I just said, hey, give me my knife. I'm going to walk. And I'm, they can barely even talk. And they're talking like this, like mumbling, bumbling. Can't even get the words out. And my dumb ass thinks I'm going to fucking walk home. Thinks that I'm going to walk home. What's up, Isaac? Came here for a Suffering Saturday workout with his son this Saturday. His hands are just healing up all the scars. So I think I'm gonna, my dumb ass is going to walk home at midnight with my gu knife or gun or whatever it was. 
completely trashed, puked all over my damn shoes and my feet, and I'm going to walk home. It's like a, it was like a 15, 20-minute drive, and I'm going to walk that whole distance, how many ever miles that is, in the middle of the night, wasted with my little knife or gun or whatever it was. So she's like, dumbass, get back in the car. So I get in the car, whatever. From that point, I decided I wasn't going to drink for an entire year. And I don't know if you guys remember this. We were eating dinner. And the year was up. I didn't drink for an entire year. Not a sip of alcohol for the entire year. And we were having a conversation. You two brought it up, like going back and forth. And you knew the year was up. You probably don't remember this. This is in the old... I old don't remember this in, anything. Everything this is in New you York. Just said, everything you just said sounds like a new thing to me. Well, you were there for all of this. You saw the puking. Because listen, when I puked in the car... And I, I you, looked, puked, you puked inside the car? I mean, some of it got like on the side and on my foot and on my pant leg, my clothes fucking stunk when I puked and I'm leaning over like a fucking loser like a crackhead on the side of the road and I look in the back seat and I see you two sitting there you both were awake and you both were looking at me like this with like squinty eyes like with like the way a parent would look at like their child like in disappointment for doing something stupid like a kid that a baby that took their diaper and smeared their shit all over the wall or something and you would look at that kid with like squinted eyes like are you serious and you two, you were like I don't even know three and look, like that look that you usually gave me, I said, all right, I'm not drinking for a year. This is pathetic. I'm a pathetic fucking human. I'm a fraud. Like, look at me. I'm yakking with these two little kids looking down on me like I'm a loser. So I said, I'm not going to drink for a year. And you should remember, we were at dinner in our house in New York. Are you falling asleep? Are your eyes even open? Are you still no, squinting I'm at me? I'm doing the squinting. Or are you still squinting at me? But this is old. You shouldn't be looking at me like that anymore, that disgusted look. You're disgusted at your papa now. So... The year is up. It's the 365th day of not drinking. Not a single freaking sip. And you two started a conversation back and forth, bouncing. You don't even remember. But you were in this conversation. And you kind of were saying, Tice, you were like, so you didn't drink for the whole year. Are you going to now have a drink now that the year is up? And I said, you know what? Maybe we will. Maybe we'll have some wine with dinner just to like celebrate making it a year without drinking. And I'm not even a big drinker. Although there are serious freaking drunks and alcoholics in my family tree all the way down the line, probably back to the fucking Titanic, but, or the ice age or the caveman days that there's, we're still living in. So it's, it's somewhere in the DNA and the blood probably, but I never really was a, a I had a problem with it. So when I would drink, it would waste me because I, 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 I just eat fairly clean. So alcohol would just fuck me up. So you said some, you two were having this conversation saying something like you're, you didn't drink for, you asked what's going to have a drink. I said, yeah, probably going to have a drink tomorrow just for the hell of it. And you like did the squint again. You did the squint again. Like that to shake. Like, and you said something like, I don't remember the exact words, but you said something like, that doesn't even make sense. They said, why would you go a whole year not drinking? And then the day, the, the day that you're done, you're going to celebrate by having a drink for not, like for not drinking. Like how fucking. Think how fucking stupid that sounds. You're going to celebrate from not drinking by having a drink. Like, you got to be an ass. You got to be an ass. So that moment at that table, I looked at both of you and I said, you know what? You're right. I'm an idiot. And see, I'm not always right, guys. And, and that's what you got to do is, is, is say when you're freaking wrong. Say when you, you're stupid, when your ideas are dumb, when things don't make sense. And I said, you know what? I made it a year. I'm going to now go the rest of my fucking life without one single sip of alcohol. And you did. The rest of my life, haven't had a sip since, and I will never have a sip till the day I die. And when I'm in, raised in hell, down there with the devil, I ain't going to have a sip down there either with that motherfucker. So, do you, do you think if there was a million dollars cash right here, and someone said, here, all you have to do is take one little sip of this alcohol. It's actually alcohol right here. It sits here as a reminder. This is when we opened up our first gym. That was a gift. We keep it right here. It actually holds up some of our props here on this set for different recordings that we do. It sits there. I look at that all the time. Easy. No problem. Do you think there's a million dollars cash right here? You, and all I had to do is take one like little sippy cup, little baby sip for a million dollars cash. Do you think that I would drink it? No. no. Not at all. No. See, Midge knows the answer. You had to no. think about it, you little greedy shit. <laughs> you, would, you, would you... And what if I said, hey, Midge, we're going to have a million dollars. I'll even split it with you. I'll give you half it. You can do whatever you want with it if I take that drink. Can, do, you, do you mind if I do it? What would you say, Midge? I would say, heck no. Even for a million bucks cash? What about you? Hold on. No. 
I'm gonna. Is speak. that a question or an answer? Exactly. Is that a question or an? Are you you asking no. me or telling me? Exactly, Midge. I'm gonna do the squinty eye look at you. So you want me to break my discipline and break? Looked in my kids' eyes and said, "I will never drink for the rest of my life, no matter fucking what." You want me to compromise that and give that up for a million for some money? No. For some cash you could just make some? more of? Think about that. Some? Doesn't matter if it's a billion dollars. Doesn't matter. Okay, now that one. Nope. <laughs> How could you? You're gonna break who you are for some piece of fucking paper with some presidents on them? Break who you are and who what you stand for and what you told you want me. So that means I could just lie to you and then t- tell you one thing and do the opposite. Imagine that. It's a fucking fraud, right? You guys want another joke? Oh no. Yeah, right. Take us home with a joke. All right. What did the shark say when he ate a clownfish? This tastes a little funny. There's the freezing. And the squint. And then the you're squint. Getting the squint even. You're getting and the, then the You're shake. getting a looking at your drunk dad puking squint. That's what we're going to call it. The puking squint. Puking. Drunk dad puking squint. All right. So the point is, have these conversations with kids. Teach them about it. Tell them about what an asinine you, you make yourself when you're doing this stuff. And... When 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 it gets how how it's what it's doing to your brain, what it's doing to your life, what, how you feel the next day, it screws up your workouts. Just having the discipline of passing up on stuff when everyone else is is drinking and doing a little snorting, the little morning line of cocaine, like in the in the damn movie. You guys ready for another joke? Oh no! Wait, hold on. Before we do this, tell me of of all these core values: discipline, energy, attack, mind, body, mission, listen, create, win, confidence, protect, and freak. Which one of those kind of fit into what we're talking about today? About thinking about what alcohol and drugs are doing to your body and your mind and your your, your control. Which one do you think those it's affected? And which ones will we be going against? In our Wait, can values? I say more than one? Of course, it's a bunch. Discipline. Oh yeah, discipline. You mind? break the discipline. Mind. Scramble your fucking mind. Listen. Because you need to listen to what you're saying. We need to listen to what you're saying. Uh, so I see what you're saying, but I'm not sure how that one fits. Body. Body. Yeah. You know what? You no, know, there's calories in alcohol, like shit calories, like worse than fat calories, worse than carb calories, just like dead calories. So they call it a beer gut. People have a gut. It's a beer gut because it's just like a alcohol just sitting there, it uses it for no fuel, no energy. But also, what about what about your energy? Your energy is screwed up. You have a different energy. You have a drunk energy. You have no energy. You wake up the next day. You know you have a headache and you're hungover. You know when you're dehydrated and you're playing for too long outside for like hours in the sun. Imagine being like that, but your stomach is all messed up and you're like, have a headache and you're all wobbly and all dehydrated. That's like what happens when you get drunk. You get dehydrated like to a massive level. That's what a hangover. And then you puke and you become even more dehydrated. So you're sick. You came and eat shit. Of course, your energy, your mind, your body. That's pretty much the ones I was thinking of, uh, really. And what what else? I guess your freak. Your freak self is being your freak self because when you're, when you're doing that dumb shit, it turns you into someone else. Like... You saw some of the dumb shit I did when I would drink? I used to drink when I was like a teenager. I would drink. Really? When I was in the Marines, I would drink. I would do some stupid shit. Cause some stupid trouble. What? Just dumb shit. I don't even know. Okay, you guys ready for my joke? All right, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap up episode four with a joke. Let's do it. What do you got, Mitch? What did Chucky wear to the dinner? Well, how did Chucky look when he went to the dinner? Sharp. Oh my lord. And I made that one up. You made that one up? Yeah. Then it's actually pretty good if you just made that up. It's a pretty good one. I hope you, all the rest were. It's not on it. Real slick. Scroll back to the top. <laughs> it's not on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Daddy, scroll to the top. Okay. Exactly. Oh. All right, so this has been episode number four with the Little Freak Shows, Tyson and the Midge. Episode four talking about drugs and alcohol. Say no drugs, suckers. And don't be a drunk, bumbling fool, especially in front of your kids. They're going to give you that squinty eye look. And then you're going to make commitments like I did. That's, that's the ultimate discipline. I will never have a sip of alcohol the rest of my fucking life. No matter what Ding. happens, I will never do it. And to, to know that, and to know that I made that commitment to myself and created that discipline, you know how sharp that keeps me? Just knowing that I have that capability to make such a, have a, such a discipline, it, it, it fucking carries over into all areas of life. Although one time... Ready for a joke? Oh, maybe he has a joke. Okay. Sure. The guy puking yeah. that puked outside of the, <laughs> the you know, this is a true story. Hanging his big, you know how huge David is, mm-hmm. hanging out at like 50 miles an hour going across a George Washington Bridge. Like he would have flung over and been swimming in the Hudson River somewhere. You think he would have? What, what does a, mil- a milking stool, 
Why does a milking stool only have three legs? I don't know. All right, what? It's like when you milk a cow. The cow has the udder. Oh my god. He's just... Uh, See, now you know why I, I just... Oh freeze. my god. His are just as pathetic as yours. Congratulations, Dave Eckert. You officially have the mind of a, a seven-year-old grade school girl. Excellent seven jokes. Seven-year-old grade? Grade school, like in school. Oh. All right, this has been episode number four of Breaking the Cycle. One more thing. Oh, no. No, no more. I cannot take no, any more. No, it's not. It's not a joke, though. One uh, time you said maybe all three of us would get drunk just for the heck of it. Oh, that's what you two said is that one time that the one time you would approve of it is if one time when you two were old enough that we all did it just to get drunk one time together. I don't know. We'd have to see about that. That would be your last time. And the only time. We'd have to see. That'd be the one time just... I can't even imagine this one drunk. Oh my God, the hair, you'd be like, Ugh. You act drunk all the time already. You act like a crackhead already. I can't imagine. Look at you. Very, very normal children. All right, this has been Breaking the Cycle, episode number four. We got to roll. We got to go eat some food and feed the beast. We got to feed the udder, the udders of the cow. We're going to eat some cow. All right, in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses. Anything you want to tell them, freak shows. No! children. I can't imagine why none of the neighbors like us or invite us over for tea and biscuits. I will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.